the Temple Owls. Now they need a win with Hooter and Stella watching on inside the Leacora Center. Vlad Boyard Tadal will throw it up with Don Daly and Brian Dorsey rounding out our officiating crew. It's Memphis ball as the former Temple Owl Nick Jordan controls the tip. And the Tigers at 16 and 5, 5 and 4 in the American had the first possession with David Jones. The sixth leading scorer of the nation has an easy deuce to start. That's funny, I said it comes down to two issues. I should have probably said two and about a million others. But we'll just focus on two. Because as you saw in shoot around today, I mean, what Penny's doing as a coach in terms of trying to correct so many issues, when you have guys for a year, it, it's been a great challenge. And it's a great challenge for any coach in the game today. First jump shot for Temple is missed by Jaleel White. The Memphis starting five, led by Jones and Javon Quinterly, who rims out a three-pointer. Naquan Tomlin, Nick Jordan, Jaquan Walton for Memphis, which gets it back with a fresh 20 to shoot. It's another steal for David Jones. The, the question is, can he have more steals than turnovers? That's been the challenge. And I only say that quasi sarcastic. Well, he just oh, turned it over yeah. after a steal. Holy so it smokes. One <laughs> immediately. David Jones oh, a couple of games man. ago had a game with seven steals and nine turnovers and a loss to UAB. There is the Memphis starting five. Tigers did not make a substitution for the last seven. 26 of the game but what were the numbers Saturday. on, on in terms of points scored? Because you look that up did they score more off of his steals than the other team in the UAB game? It was 9-7 the other yeah. team Here's Jordan Riley for Temple Miller Riley Matteo Piccarelli the guards Here's Piccarelli a good three-point shooter and Piccarelli oh. rims out of three White and Sam Hoffman fell out to five, and it's Hoffman, 33 and White, who knocked that ball out of bounds off a Memphis player. So Temple will maintain possession, and this is an Owls team, the second worst offense in the American. They will shoot a lot of threes, similar to what yeah. Penn State did for Adam Miller last year. They're just not hitting them at a very high percentage. I think Sam Hoffman's going to be a tough matchup. I mean, he's built like a World War I tank with mobility. Piccarelli's 0 for 2 from 3. That is the first time I've heard that analogy during a basketball game. Hopefully not a last. Watch a lot of documentaries. What do you want me to say? Yeah. Big Ken Burns guy over here. <laughs> White into the body of Tomlin. That's Julio White. A 6'7 junior from Whitesboro, New Jersey. Puts Temple on the board. Ken Burns just zooms in on pictures in a creative way. I like <laughs> video. Jones with all kinds of space. He nice. does not miss from there often. Okay. You've got to be able to capitalize if you're Memphis. Capitalize and break down on the defensive end because if you get open looks, knock them down, you're able to set up some pressure, and that's where Memphis is at their best. Scramble situations. I don't know if there's any team in the country, and look what they do. This is what Memphis does, and if they can speed the game, I talked about two things, right? Aligning motivations. Developing some leadership on the team now part of that requires consistency and how you want to play if they can dictate the way the game is played They are far better suited to find consistency Jones has the first five the leading score in the American and here he is again using the shot fake and finding Walton in the corner the Former Wichita State shocker Jake Juan Walton leaves it short Jordan the rebound Walton This is his second shot Jones comes soaring in to keep it alive this time it's Quinterly. This time it's Jones. Got Hoffman in the air. Hands it off beautifully. The finish for Nick Jordan and the Memphis Tigers off a couple of offensive rebounds. Have the kind of ball movement Penny Hardaway's been waiting for. Well, and simple plays, too. I mean, David Jones in the slow Euro pump fake. It's highly effective. He's able to get to the lane, make a nice pass, and get everybody involved. The more you do that, the more you get guys locked in together, the better you communicate defensively. And then you close up a lot of your issues. Uh, Sir Miller just a 25% three-point shooter with a miss. Temple has started one for five. Memphis three for six as Quinterly draws the blocking foul on Jordan Riley. And I feel like for Adam Fisher in his first year here against the Memphis team that so far is playing the game the way they want to play the game. Picking up pressure and attacking on offense. You might have to find the right lineup, but I'm not sure if it's a combination of size and physicality trying to slow this Memphis team down, but you've got to have ball handlers on the floor as well. Memphis brings in Jaden Hardaway for the first time. He feeds a cutting Walton who scores it. Well, there's some size down low there. Maybe not the physicality. Skelly 
Tipping the scales at about a buck 80. 6 6, a 6 10, 180 for Steve Settle and a turnover so, now for White. What do they call him? Skelly? Uh, Skelly? Giving, Skelly? I'm giving people nicknames already. <laughs> hey, Skelly! <laughs> That's terrible. Apologies. Apologies. Steve Settle. That's his real Thank name you. on the ball right now. Jordan, way off the mark from three. The Memphis crowd, the Temple crowd likes that. Former Owl in his first year with Memphis. I like that. That's what we saw him doing that shoot around today. I mean, his footwork's good, release is high, and that just changes the game. That's his length in interrupting the game. Walton turns it over to Riley. Up ahead, White with Quinterly defending. White staggers into it and scores for his second basket. I feel like a light went off in the building. Did you hear about 20 minutes before the game, the PA announcer was calling for an electrician? Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah. you heard that, too. I did hear right. that. Something just something to keep in mind. Maybe play with it later. Jordan spinning. A couple of four shots early for Jordan is one for three. Here's White for Temple. Shane Dezoni off the bench and into the scorebook for three. It's it's a good response from Temple, but I would be really cautious in playing Memphis's game in terms of the pace. The fastest Temple yeah. team in the American gets two at the rim from a knifing quarterly. Yeah, because the thing is, that the pace certainly plays into Memphis's hands. They are so good in a scramble defensively, and they can get you moving fast. They think less. And I mean that in the most respectful way. Memphis is dangerous when they just play simple, instinctual basketball. There's White. A couple of baskets and an assist early. White gets grabbed by Hardaway on his way to the rim and finishes through contact. So Jaleel White has contributed to every Temple point. Could be a one-point game when we are looking around the league. You probably feel vulnerable when it comes to having to win the American Athletic Conference tournament. That, that's, I mean, obviously it's not easy when it was Houston last year. But I, I just think the variety in the league, and that, that's kind of what we're seeing across the country, is leagues have more variety, and it may prepare you for the NCAA tournament, but you've got to get there first. Eh? It, it's just getting challenging. There's no real recipe anymore. New look year in the American with six new teams. It's been a topsy-turvy season with some big surprises at the top Whoop. of the league. There's the second turnover for Jones, and... Temple nearly gave it right back with a hot pass from Miller corralled by White. Something I was I was asking Penny about. Jaleel White looks good, by the way. He looks really good. I understand Jaleel White's playing a different role. He's got more responsibility, and he's, he's really stepped up in that role. I hate that I just used the term stepped up, but it is what it is. I was talking to Penny, though. It, it was like, how do you reel in David Jones? Because part of what makes him so great is that aggressiveness. He just gets in bad situations and turns the ball over. You need his scoring, and you don't want to reel him in and take some of the scoring away. So you may have to live with some of the mistakes. There's Jones off a terrific feed by Walton. Battle on the boards. Tomlin is in there fighting with Emmanuel Acomo. Does that yeah, make sense to you? With Memphis. Right? It's, it's, it's hard because there are guys where some of the best things they do are risks taken. Right? Letting them go, giving them freedom. It's a risk you take because you understand the reward. And you're never going to be who you can possibly be without David Jones being one of the best scorers in the country. You just want to sure up some of the simple things. Jones will go to the rim here and he'll do what he does as well as almost anybody in the country, which is get to the free throw line. As a big man, Akomo commits a foul. And he really has been, I mean, he's been masterful in his ability to get where he wants to go. And when he's knocking down threes, it, it's just lights out. You can pretty much call it a game. And 22 points a game in college basketball. And I understand the game has changed a lot. The leading scores in major conferences were 16, 17, 18 points a game. Scoring is certainly up. The last Memphis Tiger to have a scoring season as good as David Jones is the man coaching him. Yep. And Jones takes it back off his own miss, misses again, and the ball will stay with Memphis. Relentlessness from David Jones, whose head coach, Penny Hardaway, scored over 22 a game in 1993. And at the moment, David Jones would have the highest scoring single season for Memphis since Penny did it 31 years ago. Inbound to Malcolm Dandridge, who's been great of late. 
And uh, that's Ashton Hardaway, the younger son of the two on the team, breaks the three. So yeah. a nine to three run right now for Temple. Ashton Hardaway needs to get shot ready any chance he's open. Uh, he's a good shooter, but he really needs to be shot ready. He almost tapped that thing yeah. in. Jones with a turnover, or a steal, two turnovers, and nearly a turned over own basket. Tomlin misses the little shot put settle tracks down the rebound for Temple Memphis has got a big cold from the field Talking about Skelly I'm talking about <laughs> Skelly That's gonna be very confusing to folks oh, who just tuned in and still slightly confusing to those who are with us from the start Miller step back three And he's over two because has got the offensive rebound Again, this is what Temple does. They shoot threes at a prodigious rate White knew he missed badly. Battle for the ball on Pomo. Just chucks it in. And Temple takes his first lead. Yeah, one of the things against a team that will shoot threes is ultimately you've got to be ready for shots to go up. If you're Memphis, it's a team that switches. It's a team that scrambles. And oftentimes you're out of position. And that's something Javon Quinterly does so well. Takes off the opposite foot. Finishes with right hands. Who took off right foot, right hand finish. That's not easy. Which is one for 13 for three points and the win Saturdays two for three for four points already Thrown away by Miller. Here's Quinterly Memphis so dangerous on the run and Tomlin got his arm caught by white Jaleel white stops what could have been a ferocious sets in a lot a little bit your yeah. book Penn State guys He's a graduate manager yep. there a little bit of a different path for a head coach to take his positivity yeah stood out to me first time meeting him why do you think adam is ready to be a head coach oh look first off define ready i think that's one of the dumbest things i've ever heard people say they always say what well, is he ready well who's ever ready like and what does ready even mean here's a guy who came up and we'll use the restaurant right he came up washing dishes and then he bust tables then he became a server and a host and maybe he was a line chef at some point He's understand every role that everybody has on that staff, but he also has empathy and respect for that role. He just has a more calm approach to it, right? I think part of it is because he's got a perspective that is a little different. More of a Spolstra, right? Like I said, more Eric Spolstra than he is Pat Riley, right? Spolstra was a tape guy. He just understands the different roles, but he also understands players. He was a recruiter. And I, I think it's important in today's day and age that you are a player's coach in one way or another. You still hold them accountable. You still help, help establish good habits, but you do so in a way that's not yelling and screaming at guys. I, I really do. I think he's got a good strength to him that the more you're around him, the more you respect his abilities. I set you up for a great point. I'd just like you to apologize for what you said about my use of the word ready at the start of all well, that. It's funny. like. That's like the, the <laughs> automatic question is like, well, is he, is he ready? It's like, what does that even mean? Like, what, what does it mean, are you ready? Oh, did he work for another head coach for 50 years and then take over a program that's now playing in a world that's completely different? No, like, be amazing what is ready? If you worked for another head coach for 50 years and then get to be a head coach until yeah, then. It's called retirement. <laughs> Start as an assistant when you were eight. <laughs> Here's DeZoni. Temple has not shot a well from three, and that continues. They're one for nine. They're five for seven from two. It's a three-point Memphis lead. Nine minutes plus gone by in his first half. Well, good action against Memphis will get them spaced out. And, and part of that is by design. Memphis will help help bring pace to the game by getting spaced out playing that scramble. Hardly miss another three. Jones missed a point-blank layup and a late whistle. But he'll send David Jones back to the foul line. I think there are times when you watch Memphis and you say, why are they chasing? Nah, that's just what they do. Sometimes it's a gamble, it's a scramble. They, they just kind of communicate out of it, but they speed you up in the process. And while you think that they're getting beat, there's two guys that run and jump in half court. Now you're playing four and three for a moment, but they're playing defense from behind. That actually favors Memphis. They're putting pace on the game, and it's a pace that they'll sustain for 40, and you as an opponent may not have that consistency. Now, sustaining that for 40 is, that's also been the challenge for Memphis. Something Penny Hardaway talked about a lot during shootaround, particularly at the end. We have to play like this for 40 minutes, not just for eight. That last foul is on Jordan Riley, by the way. Temple's second leading scorer is on the bench with two. 
So Riley and Hasir Miller both out of the game right now for Temple. Zion Stanford, the freshman, is in. White returns. Where will the offense come from for Temple? Which you see Memphis score six in a row. Here's the zoning, the Vanderbilt transfer. His minutes have really gone up of late. Hoffman, White, flattens out a three, another miss from there. One for ten now for Temple. Quinterly trying to bounce it through <laughs> a full-on traffic jam. That's, Dude, that's kicked. That's like thread and sheet metal. Oh, like, man. it's not going to happen. I mean, I don't know where. There's just no way that pass. Don't play thing. Frogger on the Jersey no, Turnpike. Yeah, Frogger, great term or great game. When that thing speeds, they think it's all good until it starts speeding up. Next yeah. thing you're in the mouth of a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> that was back when uh, in those giant block computers that we thought were amazing. Yeah. Floppy disks. Oh, floppy disks were the greatest. <laughs> Carl Sharonfont, the freshman, getting his first time. He got hung up in the air. Found Jaden Hardaway. His shot was knocked away. White looking down the floor from Stanford. Temple at 6 for 17 in the game. Again, 1 for 10 from 3. 45% of their shots are from 3. That's top 30 in the nation in terms of rate. Settle inside. Hoffman outside. Another three missed. Quinterly skies for the rebound. Knocks it ahead to Sharon Pot and Malcolm Dandridge with a little cherry pick, too. That's tough when, when a big takes a three at the top of the key. You just have to know you have to be back. There's just no way you can leap forward. You've got to get back. It was Malcolm Dandridge who contested the shot, who leaped out. Eight in a row for Memphis. White will try to cut into that at the free throw line. I, I really, even though I misnamed him earlier, I really like Settle. I, I like, I like what he's got in the bag. The next step is really, the, it's not even beef up. I think a lot of times guys talk about, oh, he needs to add weight. It's like, well, thanks, Captain Obvious. But he just needs to get stronger, and then he needs to learn how to use what strength he's able to develop. How many times have you seen guys who, wow, Kevin Garnett, he's really skinny. Well, he learned how to play and use what strength he had until he was able to get more. I think Settle could be a key piece for them. Jordan's going to check back in off of Tomlin for Dandridge and Sharon Font. Rizzoni and Hoffman are out. Akpomo's back in along with Hasir Miller. I'm going to say, one of the things I do, and I'm talking about Memphis right now, is every game I, I try to identify like lineups that I really like, rotations I really like. And I realize with Memphis, any combination that I really like has to have Nick Jordan in it. And, and I know a lot of Temple fans, you know, he got booed when he got announced today. I mean, he got a different coach. I, I get it. I understand guys leaving. He was on the floor for that game ending 25 9 run Saturday. He's on the floor now as Quinterly turns it over. Memphis's fourth turnover of the game. White gets to the left hand. Woo. White explosive to the rim. Oh, that's such a tough cover. Uh, a quote big who can handle it like that. If you get the right matchups, he's just got to clear, give him room. Jones left alone. Jones delivers his second three, and he matches White for the game's high point total with 11. Everybody on the Temple bench saw that mistake as the pass was being made. You just saw them all get frustrated. Just another breakdown defensively. 38% for three Jones over his last five games. That's 43%. Stanford, the freshman, getting some run early. Miller guarded by the length of Jones. A deep three for Miller. He's 0 for 3. White has the offensive rebound. How is it that Memphis's defense looks better now than it did in walk uh, shoot around? That's honestly a good question. How do you right? think it is? <laughs> Jones. Oh, nearly <laughs> came was, down with it. He was Sets looking up for three. I mean, seriously, what do you think that is? Is it just a level of focus that I, clicks in during I the think game? In a shoot around, you're asking guys to think and do the things that you're asking them to do in a game. You're playing more. I just, I just think they're better when they're instinctual. Yeah. The less they have to think, the better they are. Their, their instincts are better when less thought is applied. Kunu, surf instructor. Mm. Water is water. 
Quinterly drills it. Javon Quinterly leads to a Memphis timeout. The kid from Hackensack, New Jersey, who's got quite the cheering section behind the Memphis bench, gets the Tigers there. Settle down, right? Make simple plays off the bounce. Now, the thing is, I think David Jones is a real beneficiary of the new officiating, right? The block charge rule. The block charge rule allows him to get his head down a little bit more and attack the rim. But it's those passes when he doesn't have anything. He just needs to sit down, make the smart pass. Memphis nearly forces a takeaway. Miller tries to throw it out of bounds off of Jonathan Pierre. It is another Memphis takeaway. Temple's sixth turnover. Tomlin almost gave it right back. Quinterly launches, and Quinterly drills it. Javon Quinterly, a much better scoring night than we've seen of late. He's got an early 10. And the Memphis pressure again nearly gets to Temple. Settle, and Piccarelli, and the Owls are across half court. Temple has missed seven consecutive threes. They're just one for 12 from outside tonight. The issue for Temple right now is, is that Memphis has been able to dictate the way this game's played in terms of the pace, the intensity. It's not something Temple can do for 40. So at times you're going to have to, you know, push and be aggressive when you have numbers, when you have opportunities, particularly if Memphis is going to pressure full court. If you have an opportunity to get to the rim, you got to get to the rim and attack it. But if you don't have anything, take the eye out of the game a little bit. Be disruptive by slowing it down. Foul away from the ball was on David Jones. Only the third on Memphis in the half. Tigers on a 9-0 run. They're settled against Jordan. A current owl against the X owl. And Jordan forced him to pass it back out. Miller yet to score. Temple's leading scorer hoists it. Shot blocked. Got a bat. That will not count. A block shot from Tomlin, a shot clock <laughs> violation. I want to go back to it. Look, look, good body language, right? It's one of the things Penny's been asking for. How are they better in a game than they were in walkthrough? I'm not just saying shoot around. I'm saying walk through. They're walking through action, and they're struggling with it. Yet here in the game, the switches have been kind of body to body, good communication, and contesting jump shooters. Penny Hardaway thinks it's partly about the lineups he's playing too, as Tomlin uses that long right arm to finish strong. Finish your point. So Caleb Mills hurt against Tulsa, yep. left knee injury, yep. and they were playing a lot of quote unquote small lineups. Yes. Now when Penny Hardaway says he's going small, he usually has a 6'9 and a 6'10 yeah. guy on the floor. With like 12 foot wings. But he was playing Naquan Tomlin a lot at the three as there's a foul to play. David Jones was playing a lot of four early. Yep. He was playing more three of the last few games. And Penny Harway felt like when Memphis went big with three bigs on the floor, they kind of lost their identity, particularly defensively. Yeah, and I, I really like what they've been able to do when they play Nick Jordan kind of at the five, David Jones at the four. Nick Jordan is away from the basket. They'll run and jump at half court, just forcing pace on the game. And, and it's, a, it's a pace that they're more comfortable with. Foul, by the way, was Jones second, so he takes a seat with 5.15 or so to go. Here's Riley on the floor with two fouls. And Jones is for his basket. Yeah, he's got a nice game. You just want to see him just lock minutes, and you're going to see him just grow and grow in this game. Back-to-back 20-point -back games for the former Georgetown Hoya. Oh, physically impressive, too. I mean, they had the flex cam up here. We were wondering whether it was some CGI action or not. Second foul on Jaleel White gives us a chance to take a breath and tell you that Saturday, college game day is going to Allen Fieldhouse for Baylor and Kansas. Last Saturday, Kansas crushed Houston at home. Another top 13 battle today with the Bears and Jay Alton on Saturday night. Anyway, 6 Eastern, a Big 12 Sonic blockbuster. The game day crew is live from Lawrence at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central. Kansas, of course, coming off a loss at Kansas State on Monday. Big 12 schedule makers did them no favor. Wow. As Quinterly okay. hits his third three of this first half. He's five for six from the field and three for four from deep. Just don't ask Javon Quinterly to get too excited about it. Um, it's just stoic in, in the approach. And sometimes that's just the guy's personality. I know you want more out of him, but that's ultimately what makes him good. 
Oh, up ahead, there's Jordan. <laughs> And Jordan wow. decided not to throw it out to the wing. And Tomlin, he finished strong over three hours. Memphis is doubling up Temple. And that was not an ideal pass, but Nick Jordan, I mean, you got Megatron, throw it up. It's hard to have a not wow. ideal pass when Nick Jordan is yeah. on the receiving end. It's a 14 2 run as Riley gets fouled. I mean, we've seen a, a few of them where you're like, oh, no, is, is that really what you're going for? I mean, where's this going? <laughs> But Nick Jordan goes up again, Megatron in the, in the back corner of the end zone. He's the only guy that can get it. And he made the right decision. His eyeballs were up. He saw Tom coming, didn't make the pass. He understood he could finish at the rim. Riley, I'm telling you, impressive. Physically good fluidity to his game. Decorated player out of high school, went out of Brentwood, New York. Was a Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of New York. Started at Georgetown, chose Georgetown over St. John's. That offers from UConn and Kansas. Never really got on track. Had a torn labrum, an ankle injury, a sophomore year, playing behind some experienced guards. Starting to find a home at Temple. There he's got back-to-back 20-point -back games. That's hard, by the way. I, I think it's fair to point out, when you come out with such high expectations and struggle to live up to it for whatever the reason, it's hard to find that again, right? Find that mojo. I think this is a good place for it, where he can play a significant role and be that guy again, because he's got the capability. He's shown us that the last few games. When you say hard to find that mojo, with a lot of kids that come out of the portal. Let's tell you, they kind of have to find the joy in the game again. Oh, look, well, basketball rehab is a real thing. If, if you can provide, as Nick Jordan just slipped for an easy one, if you can provide an atmosphere that in a way is basketball rehab, an environment where guys can enjoy and grow in the game again, look, it's still a game, man. It should be fun. It, it's gotten so businesslike, understandably so. I mean, it's pay for play. Let's be real with it. And I, I don't want that to take away with how great this game is and, and how much guys can really enjoy it. Second foul on Javon Quinterly. There's some foul trouble for Memphis. Not any more trouble, though. Six for their last six. The Tigers feel like we're not a top 10 team. Mm -hmm. I, and I think that's the thing. They understand the importance of playing well and feeling good. Right now, you're seeing a Memphis team that's playing well and feels good. They don't have the leadership to be able to play in close games. I think that's just the truth. It's just the reality, and they're not alone in that. Close games are really relying upon having guys that have been there and know how to close them out. Now, Javon Cornelly's done that, but sometimes those late makes, and I don't know, I see fool's gold. This guy, the contrarian, Sean Farnham. Mm. Well, what if they won those games? Oh, the air pushed by Hoppin. <laughs> can, can I supplement that question from Farnham? Because it's a good question. Yeah. The other side of that is Memphis started the year nine and one in games decided by six points or less. So you wonder if you go the other way with that question. What if they lose a few nice. of those games and maybe that What's wouldn't say, have papered over some of the issues that were kind of below the surface and they're a, 15 and two. It's a great question for his halftime breakdown. Yeah. I would like Farnham to spend the entire half <laughs> debating that oh question. God. Oh, Jordan! Nick Jordan with a throwdown in his former gym. But look, at this is what Farney's talking about. I mean, just the intensity, the communication on defense. Again, it's better than it was in walkthrough. These guys are gamers. Miller misses Walton high points. They're going after every rebound intensely as well. Pierre from Quinterly. Quinterly's holding out three fingers on the right hand. He knew it. Jonathan Pierre, the little used junior, a Juco transfer, makes it eight straight made field goals for Memphis. Here's the drive for Stanford. That snaps a 7 nothing run. They are just running around defensively like their hair's on fire. And if you're watching this from a fundamental basketball standpoint, you love shell drill, you're probably pulling your teeth out. Going, what in the world am I watching? But that's what they do. They just put a pace and an intensity on the game that is so disruptive. And what they're disrupting is your comfort. Jordan again in a double team finds a cut in Quinterly. Wow. Look away in the lefty finish. Oh, Memphis is 11 for 11 on layups or dunks. That, by the way, is more mates at the rim than Temple has from anywhere. 
If I had five more minutes, I'd have a better reason for it. But the reality is Temple's chasing the game right now. That, that's a challenge. And that, that means you're chasing it on offense and on defense. Another rush shot by DeZoni. Stanford comes up with it. Stanford leans in. And Stanford has a chance for a hard on play. Yeah, we, we've talked a lot about Nick Jordan. I think he's one of the most important guys on this team. And a little look away, maybe an extra step. Anytime you hear him say, look out, something might happen. Bang. He's just a tough matchup, and, and when he's utilized properly on defense, he's basically in the monster position where he can go anywhere. He can run and jump, particularly when the ball's out high. Not a lot of teams play well in terms of being on defense behind the plate. Memphis is at their best when they're chasing the play. It's the wildest thing. Toss your principles out the window. Zion so Stanford completes a three-point play. Oh, Nick Jordan's best game with Temple may have been against Memphis last year. 16 and 10 of the teams played here. They're the overall numbers. The field goal percentage way up. The three-point percentage way up. It's 13 for 26. Penny Hardaway said he really liked Nick Jordan's unselfish attitude when he saw him coached against him for Temple and when he scouted him in the portal. Unself is there, he sets up Walton for a good look from three, and it's rebounded by Stanford. Well, he's played a more significant role, but he's still playing a similar role that he had while at Temple. Take away for Ashton Hardaway in under a minute to go. Memphis on the run again up 20. Walton nearly loses it, and Hardaway does lose it. Fifth turnover of the half. Sunday afternoon, 2 Eastern, 1 Central, ESPN and the ESPN app. The all-time blue blood of the last couple of decades, UConn against the only undefeated team in the country, South Carolina, 2 Eastern, 1 Central, a sonic blockbuster in women's basketball, one of the most anticipated matchups of the year in South Carolina. Dawn Staley, some temple ties. We were looking for her in the ring of honor here. What's up with that? Can't be long before you I mean, think Don Staley will be up there. Tremendous coaching career at Temple before getting the South Carolina job. Miller still yet to score. Temple's leading scorer, 0 for 7 and a half. Stanford has the offensive rebound. Right, Stanford is not shy of driving. And Don Daly with an immediate whistle at the end of the play. Shane DeZoni. Might have some blood or is a little shaken up. He'll head to the that happens a lot where you're just like, I mean, look at the Kansas State, this Kansas TCU earlier, right, this year. Yeah. You know, sometimes things happen, and it's so hard because we slow the replay down, and then you can then you see it completely differently. So Memphis going to hold for the final shot. Tigers are 17 for 30 and a half. This has been the best half we've seen Memphis play in a long, yeah, they long do look time. Good. Trying to go out with a bang. Here's Tomlin in the corner. Missed a three. Dandridge is in there. It's grabbed by Zion Stanford. Why not? Oh, missed it off the back rim. Good half for Memphis. That, that's something you, you certainly should feel good about if you're Penny Hardaway. Started eight for 20, finished nine for 11. 55 minutes. The entire Temple team combined for 27. A lot of points at the rim for Memphis, which is 11 for 11 on layups or dunks. Temple, meanwhile, a team that shoots among the highest percentages of three-pointers per attempt in the country. They don't shoot it very well, three, but they shoot a lot. It's just one for 15 from deep. Start the half with Jaleel White going into the body of Napon Tomlin. Second foul on Tomlin. And White, who had an early 11, will go to the line. Oh, that's great. That's how they started the game, right? They, they went to Jaleel White kind of on that elbow area, extended a bit, and just attacked the right side. I, I like that. Get Jaleel White going. So maybe start getting some foul trouble. I just think the challenge for Temple is you've got to be able to play in an up-tempo game if you want to cut into this lead. 71% free throw shooter White, who's in double figures now for the 12th time in 16 games this year. You know what I like, too, is Adam Fisher knows how he wants to play. And the best thing you can do is start playing that way now, regardless of personnel. Right? Regardless of whether you have the personnel or not. You, you want to be a three-point shooting team, you need to start building that 
because ultimately how you play is is your best recruiter mm. in today's day yes nil is a big piece of that and that's why i saw Lynn Greer here earlier he's going to be very involved in that but how you play is your best recruiter in college basketball these days and that's nice Terrific wow. drive by Riley. Who will need to be a lot more involved in the second half. He's up to six. I mean, that'll test the proprioception, man. That, that had like four wiggles in it. Hmm. Need somebody to kick the ball out of bounds so we can see it again. Jones had foul trouble in that half. Did not play even half of the first half. He had, or he did play a little bit more, beg your pardon, but sat the last few minutes. Back-to-back -back baskets for Temple to start the half, and that ball's kicked out of bounds. Zion Stanford starting the second half for Temple. Watch this. Watch it. Just watch the little wiggle, 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 another wiggle, finish. Like that is like he—he's barely trying and did all that. There's Riley again on the back cut. Stanford feeds him. Three possessions, three baskets, and a quick 6-0 spurt. I'm telling you, he, he's got it. He, he's really yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's something right now if you're Adam Fisher. Great start to the second half. And this has been typical of Memphis, right? Haven't been able to put a full 40 minutes together. This will, He's got the potential to be a really high-level player. You saw that coming out of high school. Hasn't really had the opportunity to take off yet. This might be it, right? This might be it. This season, find help, find consistency, and you start to see the real potential come out of a guy like Jordan Riley. 20 points in back-to-back -back games, career high 23 last time out, an overtime loss at Tulane. Temple's on a 6-0 run, and Javon Quinterly turns it over, and here is Zion Stanford. Started by Jones, spinning inside and finishing with the offhand. And Javon Quinterly's still asking for a kick on that pass. This is where, if you're Memphis, you're coming out of a timeout. The last thing you do is make a tough play. Just, just make the right play. 8-0 run to start the half. Jordan's got a huge size advantage on Miller. Passes out with a double approaching. And Dandridge is fouled. Alcomo's arguing he kept the arms high. No, it was Jaleel White whose arm came down. And the foul is against White, his third. Very rarely will you see a guy say, yep. I did it. I mean, Alcomo was right. He didn't foul him. Yeah, I was say, wasn't it wasn't on him. So three fouls for White. Doesn't look like Adam Fisher is going to even think about taking him out. And free throws for Dandridge, who's a 56% shooter from the line. There are some guys that you have the comfort and confidence in that you can just say, be smart. There are other guys that you don't have the comfort and confidence in when they say, I'll be smart, right? You know, how many times do you see guys like, no, no, I'm good. You're like, no, you're not. <laughs> Dandridge 0 for 2. Now a little pressure broken by Temple and Miller. Well, that's going to be the key for Memphis. Can you get enough scores where you can pick up and establish that pressure again, start speeding this game back up? That's where they were at their best. White. Look at Nick Jordan. He's, again, he's kind of in that monster. He just kind of goes where he wants because he can recover so well. Riley deep in the shot clock. Elevates over Dandridge. Stanford was in a good offensive rebounding position. And he sealed off Dandridge, who was crashing down. To keep the ball for Temple. One of the challenges for Memphis, too, to, to really reach the level they expect to reach is guards have to be active rebounders. That's been a problem, particularly when they're scrambling, where you're really not in position. You're anticipating shots while well, not really enough because you got to get in position. But Stanford again switch to the left hand mid jump, and Dandridge comes down with the ball. And Dandridge will take it up himself. Quarterly on the slip for Dandridge. And that is a blocking foul. Riley came over to try to draw the charge. Malcolm Dandridge absorbed the contact and finished through him. Let me see. Uh, it's so hard. I, you know what it is? A block charge rule. It, did he start his motion up? I, I, Oh, man, so bang, bang. That's probably one of the closest ones I've seen all year. Right? I, I like that they're rewarding offensive players on shots. I like that. Mainly because I like offense. 
But I also like it because it's taken that block out of the game where it's, I mean, how many times do you see a dangerous play where a guy slides over, you know, protects himself, but takes a shot just to get the, the block, uh, the, the charge call. I think the game's been better this year, better flow in particular. More plays at the rim. Stanford loses it to Jordan. Here's Jones. Jonathan Pierre off the bench and in for three. He's been good. You know, he made a great read where he was kind of running as if he was going to go towards the paint. Saw Dandridge and popped it out to the corner. And David Jones just made the right simple pass. 6-0 run in 24 seconds. Dandridge makes it an 8-0 run. Malcolm Dandridge, another strong finish. How about Malcolm Dandridge? He was not doing that. 20 pounds ago now he may have gained weight but it's all muscle ever i think almost over a decade but he's really worked on his body this offseason and he looks terrific and the impact he has on the floor is it's, it's noticeable what did i say in an earlier game he's got like a 56 long suit with a 34 inch waist he really looks good i wouldn't say it if he was just born that way but but he's earned it it's an 8-0 run for Tempo again. If he was born that way, I'd just be jealous. <laughs> I don't know how that would be <laughs> physically possible. Hoffman make for a very uncomfortable delivery if you were born in a size 56 long suit. Mr. Literal over here. Short day for three. What other way is there to be? There's a flying rebound for Temple. That's to Zoni, who's wearing 32. <laughs> and there's Jordan <laughs> elevating for the rejection. Jones right-handed to Pierre this time. <laughs> Just wanted him to shoot it because the pass was so nice. Here's Quinterly weaving up top for Dandridge, and Hoffman hit him from underneath. <laughs> as soon as he threw that pass, I was like, oh, he hadn't had a turnover in a while, and he got through, but Nick Jordan. Maybe. Benny Hardaway talked about his unselfishness. I feels like there's more than yes, Nick Jordan yes. can do to be assertive, and we've seen some assertiveness yeah. tonight. I don't think he has to really be that assertive offensively. I, I think he has to be assertive in how he yeah. dictates the way they play, right? He sets what they do defensively, and if it hits another one, goodness. Set a good screen there for him, too. I just, I think Nick Jordan's really important. I, I think he's going to be a key to a late season run for them because of who he is on defense, but also the flexibility he gives you in rotations in different lineups. He's communicating too. He was yes. maybe the loudest voice we heard in shoot around today from Memphis. Right now he's marking Jaleel White, and he wasn't marking Jaleel White by the end of the play. Memphis fouled up that switch and snaps an 8-0 run. All right, good for Jaleel White. It's okay for the bench to do that, but good for Jaleel White not to over-celebrate a nice dunk on somebody. Time to score. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. White's had a good game. He's got 15. The the regular world, the layman would call that situational awareness. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jordan again! Wait, the pass! Did you see the pass? Maybe I saw it wrong, but that pass was something else. Holy smokes! That was Malcolm Dandridge. Yeah, it was. With the gorgeous dime. Here's White again. All right. Good foul, guys. We get to see a good replay. Yeah. Let me see. I just what I saw. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you. A little Kevin McHale. Larry Bird. You ever watch rips? Like, I've seen him on like, Instagram. Videos pop up or something, or YouTube. Like, Larry Bird passing. Phenomenal. You forget. I mean, you think of him as a scorer and a shooter. He was a great passer. I have it, but I will tonight. No, you won't. Yeah, I will. I can't say that. You're I such an abuser. What are you talking about? I learn <laughs> from great creative people. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, you don't want to learn from this much. It's my creativity. I still have a book you gave me last year that I haven't read, oh, actually, so I'm probably not going to do the work. That's a good one. Yeah. It's a hole in my library. Yeah, it is a hole. It's about 1,200 pages. <laughs> it's a good one. We're talking, of course, about War and Peace. Here's Pierre. He's hit a couple of nope. threes already. Dandridge is there for an offensive rebound. Now, the shot question clock. is, should the shot clock have yeah. reset? It did. Don Daly said yeah. it shouldn't have. That was a bit of an air mail. It's 
funny for Pierre, he's been really good shooting the basketball when he's set. So you start to establish, like, a, as a team, you look at an opponent's tendencies. It's also good to watch your own tendencies, right? When, when am I good? When do I make the most shots? What's my highest percentage shot? Well, it's when I'm set and I get a kick out three, where I step into it, I have good rhythm, there's fluidity into the shot. Good rhythm means a higher percentage of makes. If you look at that shot, it was rushing, right? He knew he could get it off, but that's all he could do is just get it off. I think you need to start doing that more as a player, particularly today's game where you're playing with new guys every year. And Pierre has really not played much at all for Memphis this year. Jordan, end of the shot clock. Jordan. That one at least hit the rim, rebounded by White. Miller. 26 minutes or so of game time. Temple's leading score is still stuck on zero. Here's DeZoni wearing 32 after he had the bloody jersey. DeZoni hits a three for Temple. He's hit both threes in the game for Temple, and he snaps a scoring drought from three of more than 20 minutes of game time. Here's DeZoni again rejected by Jones. It's a goal set. I, know, I, I honestly thought he got clean. I'm usually better in slow mo. I don't know. I think he got that clean. I was either way. It's impressive. I, I like when guys, when the whistle's blown and someone shoots a shot, someone just tosses it into the stands. How about this job for Dazzoni? That Don't three, that was yep. Temple's first made three in one hour and thirteen minutes. You and the Taro, you That's evil guys. You, you've been sitting on that That's stat, waiting Nittaro, for them. You've Philly been special. waiting for them to make a three to work that stat in. We got Mike Nataro on talent stats. It's feet across the way. It's the the Abbott and Costello of statisticians yeah, right who, here. Who are we with these legends we're working That's with? That's right. So the lead is down to 11. Here comes Temple, another mini run. Like Seven straight. Quinterly over DeZoni. Rebound Jones. Jumped to get it. Wow. Couldn't finish. Wow. That time he does, and David Jones has 13. Well, there was a time when we used to refer to those as buddies, right? He just, he's got the hops. He's got a bounce. He's also seeing the ball come after, off the rim because he shot it. He knows where it's coming off, and he just went and got it. There's White over Jones. Rebound Walton uncontested. I, I really like the Temple zone. It's disruptive in terms of pace and rhythm, but it's just a tough thing to rebound in. It's really hard to rebound in the zone. There right there. Are. Like, uh, you're not in position. You're just not in position to go check somebody out. You, you really have to anticipate shots going up. Six points for Naquan Tomlin, back to back. Second chance buckets, an 11 point lead swells back to 15. Miller, step back over Tomlin. Murray and goes. finally, Hasir Miller at the 0 for 7 start gets on the board of the three. Yeah, he's a good kid, too. I, I root for Hasir Miller. Comes back here. You talked about the little memoir book he wrote. Yeah. I think that's awesome, man. He's just sharing with a sense of vulnerability. is That's pretty big, but he's a good kid. Spent some time talking to him. Inside the stuff, another one at the rim for Tomlin. Back-to-back -back baskets for him. The lead is 14. It's a pretty good play by Javon Quinterly, kind of reading that role, knowing he's going to be open, but you have to get to a place where you can make the pass. Miller again. And that's in and out with Hoffman squeezed in between two. Hoffman ends up on his back. It's a five-on-four for Memphis. Jones whipping it inside to Tomlin. Three straight at the rim for the K-State transfer and the lead back to 16. David Jones again just making a good simple pass. I think I think that's a way to get him in, out of that turnover rut is to celebrate good simple passes more and more. Jones with five assists tonight. And Jaleel White ends up on his rear end. Fouled by somebody. Every time Temple makes a little push here, though, Memphis pushes back. It, playmaking. I, there's 10 during the break if there was a whistle on the good. play. It, look, they went over there. They got it right. It, it was a good block. I, but I like that they called it because it gives them a chance yeah. to review it. I, so 63-46 now as Julio White goes to the line. And a very nice night for White. What a career-high 21 points against Tulane on Sunday. 
It's amazing how his role has just changed so much from last year to this year. Like he's really been given responsibility, right? He, you know, he had the opportunity to play a lot last year and play a significant role, but now he's really got the responsibility of being a go-to guy on defense and, and even capitalize on some matchup opportunities offensively. Foul against Tacoma. Temple only returned two of its top seven scores from last year. White was just checked out at Miller at a two. And Jaleel White's played through a lot of injuries, too. Missed his true freshman year with a torn meniscus in his left knee and a hand injury early this year and a setback with a shoulder last year. He'd been playing with a wrap on his hand, which had become more psychological and physical. It took that off last game, and he seems a-okay without it. Acomo walls off against Jones. Here's Miller in transition, and Hasir Miller has a chance for three-point play. You and I were talking a little bit about Jaleel White, uh, White off air, and we both kind of agree. If he's a 35, 38 percent three, three, uh, three point shooter. He's a three and D guy in the league. Uh, he really is. He, he's got such versatility, handles it well. He's a terrific defender, great athlete, terrific length. If he could just really hone the shot in, I, I think you would see a different level of potential because when you make shots consistently, it's 10 times easier to get to the basket. You get hard closeouts. He's got that ability, but he doesn't have a good enough shot to really demand a hard closeout. Now he's far from it right now. He's only 2 for 21 from 3 that on the year from it, Kevin. Thank you. Just, but it will be no surprise what his offseason point of emphasis would be, Jaleel hey, White. Tell me there's a chance. Hey, we've seen guys who have never been three-point shooters dramatically improve that part of the game. I wouldn't put it past Jaleel White who can do just about everything on the floor. Well, I, I think there's something to this, though, because we're actually seeing less and less really good shooters. And form simple form shooting is like a thing of the past kids grow up they want to shoot bombs right and, and that's fine i get it i did the same thing but i also developed form first and then you kind of work your way out so the shot you take from five feet is no different i love that of travel dan just misses oh, lord cleans it up dan just trying to clear out space the whole memphis band's calling for a travel tomlin's in there and finally it's taken away by the I mean that. I think form shooting is something that we really need to bring back, teach kids at a young age so they can develop a shot they can shoot with consistency. Stanford takes a three. Miller takes a three. Miller makes a three. Back down to 11. All right, so let's see if Memphis has a response. Now, I don't, I don't know if this is the lineup that's going to have a great offensive response. You've got guys who are going to occupy blocks. You've got to really try to create some space. There have been four runs of at least 7-0 combined in this half. Back and forth we go. Walton cannot answer. Temple can cut this lead to single digits with a whole lot of basketball left. Miller screaming for the ball for seconds. He's jumping up and down again. Riley, shot fake. Riley finishes. And Temple for the first time in the half is within 10. They've cut the lead to nine. I'll tell you, Memphis, the way they play, it does make you vulnerable to run. They, they are fearless. They'll always attack. Ooh. Temple, what of that foul? Yeah, Stanford caught. He got hit up in the head by top of fouls against Stanford. I love the space here. I mean, great space. And all the defense converges wide open. Sear Miller just steps right into a high percentage three. And in Jordan Riley, I just think I think he's got a game, man. I think he's got a really good, smooth, almost like barely break a sweat game. Temple's hit three threes in the second half after just one in the first. We told you they went an hour and 13 minutes between their first and second three. By the way, they then went a minute 13 seconds between their second and third three. Fun with numbers. You guys. Jones triple team. It's a takeaway for Stanford. Got it to the right hand. Tomlin's back to the Finman. He fouls him. And Zion Stanford can make this a six-point game at the line. 
outside of the step with a little strength. I mean, defensively, really closing windows, getting the passing lanes. Good instincts from Zion Stanford, but he has been physically strong. He's been able to get to the basket more with good body control and strength than just break you down ability. I think that's all one word. Break you down ability? Yep. How about Zion Stanford, who played one minute and had one turnover on Sunday? He had five straight double-figure games between the end of November and the beginning of December. He sprained his ankle, missed a little time, then didn't really get back into the rotation until tonight. Zion Stanford's last ten games, he scored nine total points. Tonight he has 11, and he has been one of the driving forces in his comeback, which is now a 12-0 Temple Isle run. Yeah, and he's a guy, he's, he's going to kind of grow into his body. He's going to get chiseled out a little bit more, but, but his game's also going to grow. I, I like that he's been on the attack. The lead is somehow down from 23-6. to six. Quinterly missed a three, tried to draw the foul. And there's a foul on the floor. Penny Hardaway is staring at Quinterly. I'm not sure if he's staring at him because he's upset there wasn't a foul or because he's upset that Quinterly tried to embellish the foul. Either way, there was a foul away from the play on a Poma. And this is, uh, this is an interesting spot. We, we've talked about how Memphis has had a response to most Temple runs, and the way Memphis plays, it does give you the ability to make some runs. Now, the key is, can you stop an opponent's run if you're Memphis? And that's something that they really haven't been able to do over this tough stretch. Nick Jordan for a one and one and fouls on Como's third. And Jordan missed it. Miller, game feels different, doesn't it? This four guard lineup has helped push Temple back into the game. Well, it's in a bigger lineup for Memphis, which is what Penny said he really struggled with. Miller. And a foul against Memphis on the rebound opportunity. That's six on the Tigers. Don Daly's got the foul on Jonathan Pierre, his second. Who's going to take charge now in these Memphis huddles? That's been one of the that, questions yeah. for Penny Hardaway. That, that, is, that is the great question. And yeah, that's the foul. Oh. It's not a lot, but it's foul. Stanford. He's got Dandridge on him. Stanford stumbles, able to squeeze it through his legs to disown it. And the zoning really Dandridge. lost it as well. And then that is all Malcolm Dandridge. Now yeah, hang, hang, hang on one second. Now Brian Dorsey is saying it was not deflected. Now he's <laughs> talking to Don <laughs> Daly. They're going to say it was deflected, which would make this an inadvertent whistle and tempo ball. Because Brian Dorsey was going to call a backcourt violation. Let's take a look. I was just watching Dandridge on this play. I mean, he's just in scramble mode. Uh -oh. Might have been deflected. Looks like the ball changed directions off of Dandridge's hand off of this play. Either way, the call was made, so live with it. Miller for to shoot. Miller That's gonna be a hard foul. screen, too hard. Foul against Shane DeZoni. And Adam Fisher is less than thrilled. Oh, we're, we're out. Now, we're, now we're losing a little bit. Yep. Sear Miller got into it. We're Jonathan go, Pierre as well. Malcolm Dandridge go is talking to Dezoni. Nick Jordan's doing a good job getting Malcolm Dandridge out of there. David Jones needs to get out of there too. Yep. David Jones talking to the Temple staff. Looks like yep. menu is on the table in the final 805. So the technical foul is Miller. That's his second yep. foul overall. And Pierre for Memphis. Yep. Double dead ball technical. Memphis ball. Six point lead. Eight to play. A game that if you're Memphis, you simply, absolutely cannot afford to lose. For NCAA tournament hopes. Here's the Zodi. Oh, no. He got stuck by the rim. And Pierre then throws it away to Miller. Pierre had clearly wide oh, open. Boy. Oh, Lord. Quinterly turnover, then Pierre, you got a 3 on 2 and you throw it the wrong way. Tazzoni stuffed by the rim. What in the world is going on?
Our pets' heads are falling off. Miller's got Dan Bruton with a switch. Here's to Zoe. Why not? I mean, you missed the dunk. You got to hit the three. It's a 15 nothing Temple run. I feel like people just walked in off the streets, too, because there's more people. There's even people in the upper decks now. They had to hand out more T-shirts. No. Wow, wow. What a bad shot. <laughs> what a terrible shot. And it goes in. David I mean, this Jones. is so basketball right now. Straight out of the CYO. No, no, no. Yes, column. He's got 16. And the lead is back oh, to six. Yeah, Kevin, make sense of all this madness. He's got a breakaway. Oh, David Jones is going to go for the block. No, he doesn't. But then Temple gets to his own. Another look. Knocks it down on the other end. David Jones takes not a great shot, but it went in. So... What a good outcome, and almighty, we're in for a good 6.54. Or not, I don't know. <laughs> I tell you what. All due respect, you know. There's just no greater form of entertainment than Memphis basketball. I love them, I do. Like, I, I just go back, they've had some characters. Tyler Harris, awesome character, man. When he lit things up, man. There was nothing like Memphis when Tyler Harris comes in, scores 15 points in eight minutes of play. Uh, my favorite of all time, DeAndre Williams. God, I love him. Playing pro ball, where is he at? Philippines, I think. Just great energy characters. And that's, in a way, what you're looking for here. You're looking for good energy characters. Temple has absorbed the energy. They're back within four off of the Zoni free throws. Tomlin returns to the game with four fouls for Memphis. Oh, he, he wants it again. Jones will drive it this time. He's wow. fouled by Miller. Wow. Shot flattens in. Wow. And David Jones has a chance for three points on another possession. You know, he, he's just a stone-cold scorer. Uh, he's close to being a stone-cold killer, but, but that's where you got to eliminate those turnovers. He still has some vulnerabilities. But, man, when you say go get me a bucket, David Jones is your guy. That's a tough finish. And he makes his free throws, too. Go ahead, give me a stat. 82 percent. Go. Second yeah. on the team. Where, this is where you and I work well. Doesn't <laughs> <laughs> always make his free throws. You like to nerd alert it up a little bit, and then I'm. Which just, is funny because you're the one with the LED glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your pocket protector, bro? I got these, man. Six-point game. Here's White. Three shy of a career high. He's got 18. Stanford. Ooh. Jump with the left foot. Kept it down long enough. Now Miller, a step back. Top wow. one. Oh! Hussier Miller over the top of Tomlin. Wow. I still think it's a, a trap, but we're allowing that double step back, and Hussier Miller has found the three-point shot. What a game, man. All 12 of his points since halftime. Jones again. No! Oh, he did! <laughs> Fuck him up! All right, man, I may just lay out for the rest of this one, partner. This is good. We might, we might be in for another finish like we had last year. This is good, man. I would really look to get Hasir Miller just something. He's feeling it. He's got the fire from that little melee. Get him a matchup he likes. Miller in the dandridge, fouled. Boy, this pure on oh, Philly street ball right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, this hey, is awesome. Your turn, my turn. Here it is, the quad step back. Totally think that's still a travel, but we're going with it. And it's a knockdown three, and then David Jones, man, just give him enough room. That's a good contest. That's good defense. Got to tell Stanford, no, that's good defense. Good offense always wins. Ask everybody in the NBA. Sear Miller to the line for two. Nick Jordan thought it was one and one. Miller was 0 for 7 in the first half and did not score. Four for six, a dozen points here in the second. Look, this should like this this should give you some hope as a Temple fan. You're seeing the potential here. Making free throws would help. Yeah. And this could be a, this is a swing. Watch this swing. If Memphis scores, the game will feel a lot different. Two missed free throws. 
Wow, Quinterly get hit by Miller. Memphis Bench is screaming for a foul. Now Jones nearly turns it over again. He'll get it back this with White on it. Good matchup. Jones three. In and out, rebound Stanford. Yeah, I like that matchup. Jalil White's the guy you want. He can get with his with his length and athleticism. White again, not a three-point shooter. Will drive it into Quinterly. Jones with wow. the active hands. Quinterly with a steal. And then foul. That's a foul of frustration. And White ought to be careful because that is his fourth. That's who Aaron was talking earlier, the pride foul. Yeah, you give one up and, and you might have numbers going the other way. You're frustrated. Your, your pride causes you to foul. But if you're Jaleel White, you've got to understand how important you are. Now, Adam Fisher's, Fisher's going to take him out, likely. Going to take him out until probably the under four. But but you need you really do need Jaleel White. I don't know if you take him out. He's got an offensive possession here. That's a good question. You're going to end up going with a small lineup if you do. Very small lineup. Memphis's best free throw shooter, Quinterly, 83%. Hey, this is Memphis's best lineup. They, 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 remember I talked about that with earlier? With Walton coming on right now? Uh, yes. I like this lineup. They're fast. They're small. They will put pace on the game. They can switch everything. This is where Memphis is at their best because this is the lineup that allows them to play the way Penny wants them to play. Yeah, they had three bigs for uh, yeah. the spell there. Andrews, Jordan, and Tom. Uh, Penny Hardaway yeah. admitted to us, I don't want to yep. go with three bigs. But look what happened. Uh, Temple goes on a run. Temple six for its last eight. The lead is at seven. It was as much as 23. The second half, it's been down to three. Now they're in a bit of a zone, but they're gonna, it's a zone that's going to show more like a matchup. Riley, a lot of dribbling. Jordan comes to take it away. Jordan with the eyes up. Good head up. He'll swing it to Jones. He had smart. Quinterly in the corner didn't force it. I think David Jones has to get to the free throw line. Create a little space with a smaller lineup. David Jones should be able to get to the free throw line by just going to the basket. Tizoni draws the assignment. Tomlin's got the, the advantage. Tomlin's got Riley. That's the fourth foul on Riley. So Riley and White, each with four, down the closing stretch. This is getting good, but Memphis trying to hang on. I mean, how that kind of snuck in without you really noticing it. Well, maybe the fans noticed yeah. it more than we did. This is the right call, though. Yep. So Naquan Tomlin at the line. Remember, Memphis lost four straight. Looked like it was well on its way to a fifth Saturday. It was down 14 with under eight minutes to go against Wichita State, down 11 with five minutes to go. Came back and won. Memphis led this game by 23 points with 2.40 to go in the first half, led by 18 at the break. Temple has gotten as close as three in the second half. They're down eight with 3.40 to play. White drives it at Jordan. Jones comes over to rip it away. It's a jump ball and possession to Memphis. So that will be the fourth steal for David Jones to go along with four turnovers. Yeah, I, I like that play from David Jones. He, he recognized they're trying to get an ISO situation for Jaleel White. The only thing he can do is spin back. He spins back to the paint. So they're trying to do that out of bounds play where they. Yep, four, four verts. David Jones' stat line is ridiculous, by the way. 21 10, four assists, four steals, four turnovers. Not quite the seven, a uh, seven steal, nine turnover masterpiece of a week and a half ago. Pretty good, all the same. That's what you can say. He impacts the game in every uh -huh. way. Here he is again. He scored seven of the last eight for Memphis. Jones gets foul. fouled. Yep. That is such a tough ask. I, I, I can't tell you enough about hard it is, how hard it is for a guy like Tizoni to cover David Jones in space. Right, you almost have to show a little help, right? Even if it's like a full help, right? Where you're just kind of showing that you're there and then maybe funnel, play angle defense. As I got older, I learned how to do that, where you just play angles. You can't stop a guy, just force him into a bad angle. David Jones is a tough cover. And he's got to make free throws. Man, they're right now 8 of 16, 50% from the free, or free throw line. Those of you looking for Florida Atlantic UAB, that game is tipping off now on ESPNU. We wow. will get you there after this one. And Jones 
Now three for seven at the line. Memphis is eight of 17. That is, that is wild. Sub 50%. Miller, that shot deflected out of the air and grabbed by Tomlin. Last five trips, Temple has four turnovers and two missed free throws. Quinterly. Walton has a good look. And he misses a three. It's grabbed by Riley. It's a good look, though. Zion Stanford's had a monster game. The freshman for Temple. Here's Riley playing with the four fouls. And he'll get the continuation against Tomlin. He scores. He'll go to the line. And he just fouled Tomlin out of the game. That was an absolute continuation. Because he kind of comes to a jump stop here. There's the foul. Then he goes up. Yes, they're giving the foul on the shot. It's probably the right call. It's the jump shot. He creates the jump stop. He creates the contact. Yeah, but he goes up on the shot. He's so, tough. He's, he's tough. Sorry. Don't be sorry. I'll let you talk. Your turn. Wow, it took until the 2:30 mark <laughs> in the game. Five-point game, under two and a half to go now. Riley's got 13. There's some talent with these Temple guards. We've seen it in the second half. Quinterly, left-handed. Quinterly left it short. Quinterly tried to go to the opposite side of the basket. He had the entire left side open. Basket makes this a one-score game. Riley again. Riley lost it and then nearly plunged into Pierre for a foul. It wasn't called. And Temple turns it over for the 15th time. I would say physically, this game this game's been pretty physical, but it's definitely been both ways. Both teams have been able to be pretty physical on the ball with bodies. Memphis with a dozen steals out of those 15 turnovers. Quinterly, deep shot clock, Quinterly. It's Pierre. It's his third three. And he points at his head coach after making it. Play me. Play me more. I don't know if that's what he's saying. But that's the shots he's made. They just took the one after make. Two for Temple. Double bonus both ways. Tigers won four in their last five. Trying to win a second straight after that four-game losing skid. Temple's on a seven-game losing streak of its own. A lot of close losses in there. And the Owls need to make up an eight-point deficit in 90 seconds. But I think... Adam Fisher's building what he wants them to be, right? That, that's that's the way you've got to build things. You can't just be completely outcome-oriented. Pizzoni, he'll drive it, and he'll get fouled at a minute 18. Although the last thing anybody in this city wants to hear ever again is trust the process. Oh, gosh. Trust the process, guys. We're just going to keep just going to keep drafting seven-footers. Just trust the process. Eventually, one of them will work out. Ben Simmons, trust the process. Well, you are just pouring it on. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, rubbing cheese whiz in the wound. Yep. Yeah, now, and has been awesome, so. Hey, don't forget Sunday afternoon. Number one undefeated South Carolina against UConn, a women's basketball Sonic blockbuster, two Eastern, one Central over on ESPN and the ESPN app. Only undefeated team in the country in Division I, the South Carolina Gamecocks. If, if someone from 1995 hopped into a time machine and saw that graphic, they'd be like, what? South Carolina, I mean, look at the growth in that game since the early 2000s alone. You think they were ready for a Sonic blockbuster in 1995? Oh, Pierre, huh? and he gets fouled by Piccarelli, who's not been on the floor in ages, but he's and out he's there to space the floor, and foul. he commits a foul. Piccarelli hasn't played in the whole second half until right now, in fact, and he started the game. It's tough. They, they've had good stuff. Stanford's been really good. Jordan Riley's been really good. Zoni's been really go good. All right, here's Pierre, who's 0 for 1 at the line this year. And now 0 for 2. I, I like his game. I, they are finding pieces. I think that's the thing. They're finding pieces right now to kind of build. But also, something you touched on with Pierre, he's a winner. He won. 36 And I'm not saying everybody else is a loser, right? but winners are different, right? You understand what it takes to win, and it's... 
So a lot of little things done for the right reasons. Free throw makes it a three possession game. Miller, step back, short, high flying Riley with a rebound a minute to go down seven. Somebody gonna get a shot up awfully soon. Miller knocked away by Jordan. 12 to shoot, 53.7 on the clock. I tell you, Temple fans may understand this name, Tyler Burton. Tyler Burton transferred from Richmond. Very similar to Nick Jordan's game. More fragile than I thought we were. That's the book I gave you, anti-fragile, yeah. so get, get, get with it. Um, there's areas where the game is going to have runs. They need to be able to stop an opponent's run. I think it's as simple as that. If, if you can feel out runs and then stop runs, it would change things. Let's see if they get a quick hitter. Piccarelli who barely has played in the second half. Rebounded to Zoni and fouled by Jordan. That's the thing with those quick shots on out of bounds underneath. The defense is working so hard to take away layups and do other things that they're not in position to rebound. So getting the shot up might have been the best thing. Gives you a chance to make a three or get an offensive rebound. Here you are at the free throw line with the clock stop. Shane Dezoni's had a nice night. 13 points, nine rebounds, two steals. His minutes have been limited of late because he's been battling an illness. And Dezoni knocks it through off the front rim. White will take a seat because he has four fouls. And figure at this point, Temple will foul to extend the game. Yeah. Pierre is going to check in as well for Jordan. Riley is still on the floor with four fouls. There have been 26 total fouls in the second half. Which is why if you're an FAU or UAB fan, we haven't gotten to you yet. Five-point game. Jaden Hardaway can run after the make. Into Quinterly and Adam Fisher says, why did you foul that guy? Yeah, I was going to say, not the right guy to foul. And the truth is, not the right guy to let get a catch. But Quinterly did a good job of really sealing kind of a box out there, holding his ground to get open. And look, if you're a good guard out there and, and you make your free throws, learn how to get open. Like, that, there's a skill to that. Practice against some, like, NFL quarter cornerbacks or something. Memphis is 4 for 13 from the free throw line and a half. And Quinterly, who is their best free throw shooter, makes that a little more palatable a percentage. Is he still at 90? No, he was at 83 oh. coming in. So the basis of He's your question is incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> this makes it a three-possession game. And he missed wow. another one. My goodness. Wow, it is amazing how many free throws they've missed. Five for 15 and a half. Miller stripped by Walton. What a good play by Walton. Memphis's 13th steal. And Jaquan Walton is fouled. It's really interesting. I, I, I said before, like, watching Memphis over the, the struggles, it's been less game analysis and been more game player or player in the game psychoanalysis trying to get a feel for where this memphis team is mentally emotionally and in every possible way and the body language isn't bad but they're not a team with a crazy fire right and, and that's the deal they've been communicating with one another even the bench is communicating with the guys on the floor that's key Particularly when you don't have that that guy that you know you can trust to kind of lead the way. Walton hits a first free throw. Memphis, remember, 15 and two, ranked tenth in the country three weeks ago. They lose to South Florida. They blew a 20-point lead at home. They lose at Tulane by two. They lose at UAB by nine. The real crusher is a three-point home yeah. loss to Rice, and then they barely beat Wichita State. White is fouled. Hasir Miller just fouled out on the last oh, possession. No, oh, by the way, and that's Jordan's fourth. So there are five players that are either four or five fouls today. Okay. That almost looked like he meant to foul. Yep. What? I'm not sure I'm familiar I mean, there, there's with that strategy. There's foul up three and there's foul up eight. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Yeah. See how it plays out. White hits the first. <laughs> Jordan looks like he's trying to explain his position. 
Rick Stansberry, longtime head coach, has some words for him. I think there's an acronym for that. Would you like to educate the class? <laughs> I don't know. I'm that kind of job okay. security. White's got 20 points, and Piccarelli fouls Pierre. Uh, we apologize to FAU UAB. You're just never going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, it, I hope we have Good. ESPNU in every household that wants to watch that game. We, we, need, a, we need a two and a half hour uh, window minimum for Memphis yep. games. And it's like, that's not a criticism or a knock. They just go hard. It's just when reality. teams play fast and play physical, particularly the opponent fouls. How many fouls have there been in the half? 30th foul this half. And Pierre misses a free throw. The last ten points combined in this game have come at the free throw line, and probably it could be the last twenty. Oh, Pierre misses Good them both. Lord. Three pointer makes this a one possession game. There's still thirty seconds left. White, not a three point shooter. Piccarelli is. He trades it. It's a three point game, and a timeout taken by Temple. How is this game not dead? Well, it's not dead, Kevin, because he. Walton, Qu Quinterly, or obviously David Jones, the basketball. Memphis in the second half, seven for 19 from the free throw. Remember, they Pete. do struggle with turnovers. Oh. Inbound is to Jones. Stanford will foul him at 25.4. Oh, all right. Let <laughs> free throws. David Jones, who is an 82% free throw shooter. Tonight is three for seven. Maybe it's something in the Temple Band. Maybe it's the reflection of the drum kit. It's that big tube out there. Oh, oh my God. goodness. This is amazing. He is all for four and a half. And you can see the body language tell the story. White returns for Temple. They're going crazy in the whiteout section of the band. Jones hits it, and it's a two-possession game. Well, if you're in Memphis, don't foul. Force a tough shot, get a rebound. Here's Dezoni with 20. Stripped by Jones! Wow. David Jones fouled after his fifth steal. <laughs> See, more steals and turnovers. Bang. All right, David Jones, he's tougher than you think defensively. He's just got great hands. Dizoni's trying to set up the action to the basket, and I like the idea, but just not really cautious enough with the basketball. Again, free throw. Jeez, this game. After the 45th foul of the game, Jones has found his stroke at the line. There are a lot of games where I'm like, man, I just I missed the locker room teaching whatever all that stuff i'd love to coach sometimes in this game i'm like i am changing seats for nothing <laughs> jones misses it update that graphic nine for 23 and a half riley pull up three nope. way off line and the rebound into the hands of quinterly who can oh. probably Put this game away once and for all. But think about this, too. For Adam Fisher, you're right there. Like, think about what they fought back from in the first half. Let's go back to it. First half ends, it's 45-27. For your team to stay in the fight, like, let's, let's actually think about that. For them to stay in the fight, have good body language, positive energy, Good for Adam Fisher, but man, they're building something and they're not far off. I think they're finding some groups that they really like. Oh, Lord, touch it all. <laughs> you might hear some <laughs> squeaking sneakers and bouncing basketballs at 3 in the morning in the Memphis practice yeah. gym yeah. tomorrow morning. Quinterly. And also, you also may hear some questions that, that point to how Vegas seems to have it all figured out. We're still a couple of points away from that, I think. Yeah, not, uh, 
That's Dallas Jones. It's a play. That's going to do it. David Jones, six wow. steal, wow. ends this topsy turvy basketball yeah. game, which concludes with Memphis on top. Was it pretty? At times it was. At times yep. it was anything but. The Memphis wins at 84 70.